Sit down. The theme of the program which the man has been holding ever since is where are thou? It's like say man where are thou? Now the man of God who came said it's a wonderful team and it gave him a kind of sleepless night and at the end God gave him a message. So when the message came, I said, ah, this is old topic that we were, ah, before, where are thou? Why not uh, this, uh, but later on, I now found out that this is not just a topic, it's a pointer, so that we can get off from where we are and stand where we should be. So the person who suggested this topic among the men, May God richly bless that fellow in Jesus' name. It shows that they were observants and they know that some certain things were not in place and that these things need to be in the proper place. Amen. Like in the Holy Scriptures, right from the beginning where they took their test, I would still wish us to go back there and read verse 8, verse 9, and verse 10, which says, and they heard the voice of God walking in the garden. Genesis 3, which is normal. Genesis 3, we are reading 8 to verse 10. said, And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife healed themselves from the presence of of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Verse 9 says, And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? May help me to say that. Where? Point to somebody. Where? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid. When, when Adam heard the voice of God in in the garden, what, what happens? He was afraid because I was naked and I, and I hid myself. Okay? And God said, Who told thee that thou art naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree? Or had you know, the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? It's a question. Okay? That is verse 11. Let's forget about that. Now, you see, Adam replied in verse 9 was a sign that he was in trouble. You understand? It was a sign that he was in trouble. You know, at times, when we do some certain things, and we know that this thing was not well done, our heart will be jittery. So, when you remove your attention from God, from God, from God's instruction, you eventually land in trouble. If we are children of God, any moment we remove our mind from God's instruction, you know God always gives instruction. And by the time you do not follow God's instruction, what will happen to us is that there will, be, there will be trouble in our heart. The scripture says that if our heart condemns us not, we are at peace with who? We are at peace with who? God. If our heart condemns us not, we are at peace with, with the Lord. So you see, when you live where God has placed you, things in your life start getting displaced. Yeah. Where the Lord asks us to be, Anytime we push out from that place, things will not be falling in place. Let me cite an example. When I got married some years back, three months after my wedding, in fact, there was no peace in the house anymore. Not that I and my wife were fighting or we had, we loved ourselves so much 
But I observed as a man that look, look, look this is not type of home I'm looking for for my wife. I cannot be watching her suffering. So I decided to go and look for money to take care of my wife. You know, it was a trying time for me. But what happened, I was not able to stay. And I jumped out from the ministry. And I said I was traveling out to another country, far away Gabon, to incorporate our church with them and come back in six months. Who told me whether I will be able to come back in six months? You think it's from here to uh, worry? You enter Motu and you enter back. It's not like that too. So when I left, in fact, what made me to leave? Before I left, I was having some trousers. Maybe up to save three or four. Then I was also having some shirts, maybe up to three or four, which of course I put inside a bus. And that was the bus I carried. It was contain, containing clothes. Then my wedding suit. I think I wear that with blue suit. Thank God I'm still wearing blue today. That wedding suit, there was a bow tie, red, and also ne- uh, waistband, like Hokoga, those days. And that was how I did my wedding. I put those ones inside. So that when I get to Gabon, that is what I wear to the church. Immediately I left. The few properties that I have. eh? I needed God to add more. When we got to Abana, I saw myself selling them to eat. I sold my shirt. Because hunger was almost finishing me there. I had to sell my shirt, the bought. Then with it I ate. At another time again, I sold another one. At another time again, I sold another one. That was how I kept selling my clothes one after the other. You understand? Until it was remaining. The only one I put on and that wedding suit. Eh? God said, who told thee that thou art naked? Here I said I was passing through pain. So I decided to move her so that I will have more materials. But no sooner I left, I was already selling my own clothes by, because I was not in the proper place. I have left the proper place. I started selling them. One after the other. Then, thank God for voice of reasoning. He came. Where are you actually going? Have you seen this thing? Have you seen this place you are going in Revelation? Is it God that asked you to go? These questions were now coming. And I looked at myself. I truly, God has not revealed anything about this place I am going. Oh, that means what... Ah, the decision I took is wrong. And so what happens? I woke up the following morning and I told my, 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 my own brother, I have a son here, then and both of us traveled with some other persons. I said, come on, this place we are going, I have not seen the revelation. He said he saw himself driving car, driving car. I said, but to me I have not seen anything like that. I said, it's like I want to go back home. And as I told him, I also told the other people, we suffered there. Hmm. Uh-uh. But let's forget that one. So we decided to come back. To Benin, where I, whereof I said, I mean, not just to Benin, to the proper place where God said I should be. You understand? When I came back, I was surprised after some time. I was having clothes again. I hope you understand. So it means that by the time we leave the proper place, things will not go well. Praise the Lord. I'm going somewhere. God is omnipresence. When we say God is omnipresent, that means He is everywhere. Okay? And 
God can see Adam wherever he was. But why did God ask where Adam? Because God did not search for Adam anywhere else. When God was going to look for Adam, there were so many gardens. He came to that particular garden. And it was from there he was asking, where are thou? Note, God will not come to look for you where he did not place you. God always come to where he has given to you. And when he didn't find you, there is a problem. If God place you in ushering, for example, say for instance, place you as an usher to be doing the ushering work. Anytime he's coming to give you his blessings, he comes to that post where he kept you as an usher. And by the time he didn't see you there, he gives your blessings to another. Now the question is that, where did God place me? Now you find out that we will not be able to really carry out some functions, some responsibility in the church because one, man may be living out from God's presence. Where do we find God's presence? From his word. You know, programs like these, you will see that our fellow fathers, none of them could even dare swordry. Because it's a problem to open the Bible. None of them could even dare Bible recitation. Because it's a problem. Can somebody among the men come out to say, look, let's quote the Bible. And you see, that is where the prince of the Lord, one has shifted away from God's presence. Now, if the word of God is not in one's life, how are you going to know the importance of evangelism? How is one going to know the importance of follow-up? How is one going to know the importance of coming together to fast and pray? How will somebody know the importance of Bible study? How will somebody know the importance of Sunday school? How will somebody know the importance of being an usher? So, so on and so on. It is the world that propels all to our rightful place. So when you begin to blame... Why are you not doing this? Why are you not doing this? It's not the really issue. The issue is that many are in the garden, but they lack God's voice. God's voice. You know, before now, when he hear God's voice, there's a kind of joy in his heart. But now, when God's voice comes, you know, he'll be troubled. You know, when I was coming to the church yesterday, I found one of our men. This is his shop where he's doing business. Then, nothing is moving at all. No customer is not even attending to the instrument he's using to work. He went to the side of it and he sat on a bench with another man and probably one or Two other persons. And they were just relaxing as if nothing is happening in church. So as I was driving, I just flashed my eyes towards there and I saw him. So I went and brake. And by the time I brake, I started revising the car. I revised and I revised. And I called his name. He looked at me. He quickly jumped. He came and I said, my brother, Do you people not have mail program? He said, yes. I just reached out now. Probably he went to work somewhere else. I don't know. 
And I said, and we have men's program. Even me, I'm rushing to the church. So, and I move my car. To me, is that that man will hasten up and come to men's program. And behold, I watched and I looked and I couldn't find the man. By the time we closed in the evening, as I was going back, that same spot he was sitting, the other people were left. It was only him that was made. He was still sitting down there doing nothing. And it's a man in this church. He's not even in church now. In my mind, I said, it may be that some of them didn't pay levy. I hope you understand. Because one will be thinking, what will now prevent this fellow from coming? And maybe they may be told to pay this amount for us to be able to do this. He will say, like, like, if I go, then go drop me money. And so because of that, I will not attend. You know, men can be funny. <laughs> then to me is that you are looking at money. You are not seeing the big God. But this is a man that has a wife and has children. And this is a man I know something about. I know the project that he is running. Not just a quick project, heavy project. Now, should somebody like that say that he doesn't have the money that he is asked to pay? I'm just talking. You understand? I will never believe him. Because I'm also doing a project very near him. So you see that it is the absence of the word of God. When somebody shifts and eats the forbidden fruits, you will not know what to do. You will not know your importance. You will not know the value of the Lord in one's life. And that is why you will not even attend the program on time. You will come very late. I hope you understand. I saw one of my brother yesterday, the way he was dressed. He dressed like somebody doing labor, labor work. And I said, what is happening? You prepare to do this program. Even our women, they even so close. The one they are going to wear the first day. The one they are going to wear the second day. The one that Abby, is it not what we see in this church? Now, men did not even sew any cloth. Okay? Because you know God is not faithful enough. Then, the one that they have, still iron it and come, is still an issue. But by the time we get close to you, we find out that, look, when the amount of the word of God is enriched in one's life, you know how to arrange yourself before God because I go Saka, I mean Osamauna, praise the Lord. So you see, this is what we are talking about. Look, nobody is really free. I remember one day, I don't know whether I've said it here, I was having stomach pain. And they were having program in the headquarters. So I just told myself, hey, my wife said, uh, let's go. And I said, you people go, I'll come later. I thank God, the Lord has helped us. So they drove off. Then me, how to move, and I didn't tell her I was having stomach pain. This thing just came suddenly. And inside it, my phone rang. One of my daughter here called me. I said, Daddy, I have a deco. I have a deco. The tree just making me crow, crow, crow. And me that is calling is having what? I just lay down on the bed. From the bed, I took the phone. I said, in the name of Jesus. You headache. I rebuke you. I command you. And after I finished there, he said, my son. He started... Complain, talking to me about his son again. Then I also pray, give counsel on that. And she left. And I hope the fool. After a while, I found out that the stomach pain was not there anymore. <sighs> then I wore my shirt. And I went straight to the church. 
You remember when I go to the church and I give ta- testimony that look, hey, God, this God can try us. Oh, Suppose I just said, I beg you, phone call, I won't answer. I hope you understand. Because I saw the person's name. And he's even sitting here looking at me now. Now, then I prayed. And me, away. I hope you understand. I mean, no phone now. Kiri kiri asegui. Pastor also have their challenge. But I have to do that one first before my own. So God saw in my heart that I love that fellow. That fellow is not supposed to be passing through what she is passing through now. So when I prayed for her, and after I prayed for the son, then gave counsel, then off the phone back again. Not quite three minutes. I didn't see that strong trouble anymore. And I just dressed up, wore my shirt. Then I went to the church and I fellowship. And when I got to the church, I was now dancing, dancing, dancing. Oh. Then later on, I said, praise the Lord. See what the Lord has done for me today. Amen. So you, you see, once you are in the place of God, so certain things that we go through and we consider them as problems, they are no problem. It's because... The amount of the word of God in us is, some, is, is, is somehow. Do we really know him? It is better to know him than to know church. If you know church building and you do not know him, it's an issue. Praise the Lord. The greatest way the devil punishes believers is to displace them because... By doing so, God will not find them to bless. When we, when we leave the place God asks us to be, where is the place I'm talking about? This is the place. This is the garden. And when God is not finding us here, eh, eh, we are going to do you know the reason we are in church? It's because of what is written here. I have one. Thank you. The reason we can talk about God is because we are in the garden. It is in the garden. Here you find fruit. You find whatever you are looking for. Yam. Comfort in the family. Look at it. It's from the garden. And when God wants to talk to us, it is from here. So, Adam did wrong because he was not here. And God is asking him, where are thou? So, if God can't find you here, it will be difficult to assess God's blessings. The man of God who came, he said, when we are talking about wet, he said, the least in that group is money. A lot of people can do anything because of money. Find God. Find whom you are. Find what he has blessed you with. And money will follow you. Praise the Lord. From verse 6, we see that Adam was more loyal to his distraction than his master. That fellow was distracted. I am the master. As I was coming, I saw him by his door. Then I stopped. I revised back to him. And I called him. And I reminded him of the program that they have. After reminding him, I left. I am his master, Abby. And I move, believing that as I talk to him now, he will be in the church. For where? He didn't. He even valued his distraction. More than the words that I was saying. That is what happened to Adam. And that is what is happening to us. 
Some men, you know, when women are doing their program, you see every one of them moving. We are, I have never done this. So I have not. They will sing this. They will sing that. They will sing. Do men even bother? I don't know. Go do and there as you wish. Yes. Why do we want the fire to fall first before we start running? Why? God is number one. God first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. God first. God number one. And when God is number one, you find out that things will go well with us. We want to arrange our lives. But it is better when you allow God to arrange it for you. Just like Esau was more loyal to food than to his birth rights. Because of food, he didn't value the throne that God has given him. You know, at times... Some of us that are coming late to church now. There are some of us that come nine. There are some that come after nine. And even as we are seated now, maybe some, before we close, will still enter. But we'll just go and watch tomorrow morning. Seven o'clock. They are already in their workplace. I remember I called one of my members yesterday morning. It was very early. And I called and I said, are you still at home? He said, no. He said, where are you? He said, I've gotten to the store where I work. But I've moved. I want to go to somewhere else again. Then, and I discussed what I was going to discuss with, the, with that, my, my, my member. Then, after I dropped the phone, I said, man. He said, what? I said, see, I told this fellow he's still at home. By now, he don't restore. And if we don't still move from the store to another place, I hope you understand. I thank God for her life. She doesn't joke with time. Then I said, if every believer will value God like this, we will not complain. And nobody is even following this person up. You don't want to go up today. But when it comes to church, that is where we will come very late. God is asking, where are thou? If the word of God is really in our life, we will not allow anybody to tell us because we believe that we are going there to reap. Just like I have told you sometime ago, any time I'm going to church, I just have the, 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 the mindset, this mindset that I'm going to church to invest. And God is actually blessing me. Praise the Lord. So please, my brethren, let's know it that your bed right is your throne. It's a joke with it. And he suffered a lot. You know, when I told one of my sons that we traveled together at that time, he was the one that even showed that place to us, that place where our church lived, stayed for 10 years. From that place, God gave us this place. He was with us. He just came one day because he's a businessman, does business very well. And he was really supporting the church those days. That means helping members. You see? So we just move. And he was the one who told me, say, when he got there, so he said, ride the motor. I said, no, I can't see it. So we returned. When we got home, he said, he's going again. I said, no, I will not. And before I came, the church was almost closed. You remember? The youth, the person I asked to help to help me at least stayed as a pastor. I just married her. She was just three months old in the church then. That man brought the youth together. Soak another thing inside their lives. 
the only few persons that were supportive to her them were the women. The few women that we have those days. Women. May God bless women. You see, when I came, that my friend that I kept as the pastor, he didn't come to church. Later on, he just came to me. I said, he's not a pastor. He said, so, he's an evangelist. So, he won't come to church again. He left. Not quite long, the youth just called me. They said they have what they call it a kind of love feast. We ate. After the love feast, they said from today they will not enter the church again. You see, the clothes and everything, they were all, I hope you understand, going away. Because God couldn't find me. And so the whole thing was just going. Thank God that I repent. It will be once upon a time I was a pastor. It will be like that. Thank God I repent. I, I came back. And when we came, the church was just wobbling. 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 Wobbling until God happened to. Look. Always find yourself in the garden. If not, thing doesn't go well. But do you know that that my friend who told me then that he was not a pastor, that he's an evangelist, he's not called to do a pastor, today is a pastor. That's a big lesson for me. So ever since I said, God, better go help me. Don't allow me to be distracted anymore. The place I ran away from was where I came back. And today, see what God is doing. The, devil, the devil's distraction is more attractive than God's instruction so that he can destroy you. When he paints the thing before you, ah, it's your service time. Ah, I beg, we'll go another day. And probably money is coming out from the thing. Then you don't know that, look, God should be first in everything you do. Whatever profession, whatever profession, God should be first in everything you do. I gave people work to do when this main program was going on. I said, as I'm giving a program, <laughs> yeah, you will know we mess program right now. See, eh, when I'm winning double deal, eh, so, I The reason I'm saying is so that somebody will not say, "A Reverend, I give me work." Then I go to the other one. I also give. I say, "Hey, Oga, how na? I hope you remember. Say, we na get men's program today." Uh-huh. So that you know, I know that the team they are going to receive good money. When I say good money, I know what I'm talking about, but. I do not want them to look to look at that thing they call money, that paper they call money. And because of that, they are not in the church. The very day you know that money is a slave to you, that day you will not worship money. It's because one has not accepted the real thing. That is why money is still your Lord. Yes, that is the pure truth. You make them understand. You made them understand that. Look, you must look. And actually, those people I gave the work, they were not late. Because I ring the bell. I hope you understand. Though this thing is sweet, I ring the bell alone. But if it is their own time and I'm not there, someone on earth gave them the work, would they remember that there is Bible study? 